All right, so now we move on to the topic of centripetal acceleration. Now, let's imagine that I have an object uh, attached to a string, and I'm swinging it over my head like this. So uh, I have an object that has a certain mass m, swinging it over my head, and it's moving at a constant speed, v. Now, even though the object is rotating at a constant speed, so here I have an object, Uh, going in a circular path. Even though it's traveling at a constant speed, the velocity of the object is changing. And the reason it's changing, because if you remember, velocity is a vector. And vectors have a magnitude and a direction. Now, the magnitude is constant. However, the direction is constantly changing. Right? So, for that, because of that, uh, it has to have an acceleration. So, the acceleration is not equal to zero, even though the magnitude of the velocity or the speed is constant, because the direction is changing. There has to be an acceleration to describe how this velocity vector changes. And see, notice the velocity vector is in this direction here, but over here, the velocity direction of vector is in that direction. Over here, it's in that direction. Here, it's in that direction. It's always tangent to the circle. So there has to be a way to describe what is the acceleration of this object. And we call that acceleration the, uh, the centripetal acceleration. It is a vector, just like our other acceleration when we were talking about linear acceleration. This is the acceleration that actually causes the, the, <coughs> the velocity vector to change. Now, this centripetal acceleration is always towards the center of the circle. It's always in this direction. That's my centripetal acceleration. I'll call it a c, c for centripetal. And the magnitude of that centripetal acceleration is equal to the speed squared over the radius. And the direction is always towards the center. Right? So that's my centripetal acceleration. I can get an alternate form for this, expressing it in terms of omega. Since I know that my linear velocity is equal to my angular velocity times my radius, well, centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. And so this is going to equal omega r squared over r, which is omega squared r. So this is also my centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration is either v squared over r or if I don't have my angular, my uh, linear velocity, I can express it in terms of, of uh, omega, which is the angular velocity. The units of centripetal acceleration are just like regular acceleration. That is meters per second squared. And you can see how that works out here or here. Now, the centripetal force is a term used to describe an already existing force. So something causes the centripetal force. It's not a, not a separate force. So, for example, in the previous figure where we had the, the ball on a string and the hand moving it around, uh, the centripetal force is caused by a force that's already existing. And that force is the tension in the string. That is what causes the ball to go in a circular path. And that is the centripetal force. So, centripetal forces cause circular motion. They actually pull the object into a circular path. And in this case, it's that string, the tension in the string, that's pulling it into a circular path. Now, it's not always a string. Like sometimes, for example, let's say we have a car going around a, a, uh, around a curve. And we'll see a problem like this in a bit. If we have a car going around a curve. The centripetal force that's causing the car to go into that, into that, uh, into that curve is the same as the static frictional force between the tires and the road. 
Okay, so it is this force that causes the ball to change the direction. Thus, the, uh, the tension is the centripetal force. All right, now we can calculate the centripetal force, the force that causes this acceleration. The centripetal force causes the centripetal acceleration. And we just calculate, calculate it like we would any other force, F equals MA. Or in this case, it's going to be our centripetal acceleration, or F equals M times V squared over R. So this is our centripetal force. Our centripetal force is MV squared over R. And as I said, for example, uh, as we had in the in the previous problem, the uh, the tension is the centripetal force. Okay, I'll try this quick test. And this one as well. These are similar to homework questions. At least that one is. I think that's the end of that chapter. Uh, yes, that's the end of chapter seven.